two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hello and welcome to the stream. I was just remembering how to count. Not very good at that. Uh, previously we were looking and uh, at Mathix to uh, graph some data, but it turns out Mathix is a pretty uh, pretty sucky program. And it turns out now that I've sort of looked around a little, a little bit, um, there's quite a few other choices. N GNU plot, of course, is one of the oldest plotting programs, and it turns out that it also seems to be one of the top ones, and it can do a lot more than I thought it could do. Uh, so we will be using GNU plot here in just a minute. Uh, Maxima actually looks interesting too, and I might look at that later. Um, it's supposed Maxima M A X I M A, uh, which is supposed to be a clone of sorts of Maxima, which was a commercial program earlier. Um, so it looks like Mathematica maybe has not been duplicated, but I, I do remember Maxima, and I do remember Maple actually was the first uh, symbolic manipulator I used, I think. Um, I could, but it was or and MATLAB, Mat, MATLAB of course exists, but that's more for engineers and and therefore a lesser people. Uh, it's not as good for people with brains. That was just a joke, but but it is more about uh, numerical solutions than symbolic solutions as far as I know. Okay, so I was doing a little bit of uh, testing here, so um, what we're going to do now is we, we did write that program that tells us the position at every, um, the obscuration level at every uh, latitude and longitude, divi divisible by five, of course. Um, and I think, let's see if we actually have it. Um, I should call it file one, didn't I? There it is, file one. It's nope, it's the wrong one though. Hang on. So is this the um Yep, something went very, very wrong, I think. Alright, let's look in the history real quick. And I think this is the one that I that I sort of liked and said this is the one we're gonna use. Um I do have to be a little bit careful here because we only want one of these and we probably don't want the eat w at the left but let's uh, let's um, let's make sure we only have one of these suckers and again this is very pr preliminary um, great so they both occur in 2021 I'm trying to get it down to where there's just one of them There we go. And then we will do... Um, I mean, in theory, we could keep the EW, which I think stands for Eclipse Around the World. At least that's what I'm pretty sure I wanted it to stand for. Um, and I'm going to use said, just because I kind of like said. Um, and we need to get rid of the last line, because it has nothing to do with latitude, longitude, and obscuration. Um, we will name this test one, and we will edit it to get rid of the last line. And what we're all working up to here is can we make a contour plot with the GNU plot? Um, I don't know, can we? Don't know. And just to keep things as confusing as possible, we're going to keep it in the Mathix directory, um, not in its own GNU plot directory. I don't think I have a GNU plot directory, and I don't know if I want to create one. Um, so the, the goal here is we're going to uh, we're going to say that um, um, at this my x's and my y's mixed up. Yes, I'm going to flip these. I mean, I could of course just reverse them and pretend you know, this is y, this is x. But I'm going to be a little bit nice and say this is x, this is y, and, and then this is z, the thing that we're plotting. Uh, and I'm going to try to scale it down between um, you know. Uh, like a rainbow or something, so we have a little bit of a, a little bit of something going on there, um, something useful going on there. Um, and I guess while I'm going to be doing all that, I might as well. Oh, this is vclib.h that does this. We go to the eat w. I don't think we really need that. And we will print in the standard longitude latitude uh, data format here. Good. And I guess if I'm going to go crazy with this, I'm going to and I need to change bc occultations just so it'll remake. I think we're going to get rid of this little printout sign here. Alright, so let's do this. Okay. There we go. Made it. 
Let me see, Occle, and let's see if this is, um, I'm just going to do a less on this, and I think we know from previous experience this is just going to be one, one shot at, yeah, this is actually correct, we, we're going through each latitude once and then through each latitude once. Notice, of course, that once you're at a lab, latitude of 90 degrees, these are all the same point, They're, they've collapsed into one. But since we're going to be using a cylindrical or equiangular projection, um, we need to print all of these. So this is not a great projection, I, I will admit. Um, orthographic would be better. Um, Mercator would be worse. Uh, and there's other, really, Robinson would be a good projection here. Lots of good, lots of good possibilities here for projections that we're, we're not using. Um, so let's go ahead and make this into the new file one. Okay. So now we're going to, um, and we're going to say mathx, uh, first we'll call it playground, and I don't know if there's a proper extension for GNU plot, so I'll just say playground.gnuplot. Okay, um, this is the official documentation, which we will ignore, uh, but there are good pages on this, hopefully, that'll tell me contours, okay, this is a demo script on how to print contours. Um, Um, ooh, shiny. Um, not what I want at all, but here from the somewhere it actually lets you call in a file instead of having to use this, um, use, uh, use generated data. Um, at least I hope it does, because, you know, that's going to be kind of sad if it doesn't. Um, I'm pretty sure it does, though. Um, set as plot. Unset. Here we go. Okay, we will look at this. Um, so it might be a simple, it, this is not going to work, but, but, uh, we're going to try it anyway. It might be as simple as just saying splot temp file1.txt. That, I'm actually freaking surprised that worked. And I'm even more surprised that you can do this. Because I forgot that the new plot lets you do so this is actually pretty awesome. This actually shows you where the um, oh wow. Well, that y this is um, this is actually really nice. I like this. Um, shows you where the eclipse is maximal right there. Uh, and unfortunately, these don't correspond to latitude or lat longitude because we've set up our s um, because this is in J two thousand and because the Earth rotates, the Earth's J two thousand position. Uh, uh, changes constantly. Now I could put all of this into the Earth fixed frame, which I'm tempted to do, um, but we're going to actually be doing this with other stuff, such as Io's moons and stuff. So, so we can't. Oh, it's Jupiter's moons, such as Io. This is actually very, very nice for something that just took um, like one second to uh, to to bring up. So I like that. I like that enough that I'm going to put that in here, even though of course temp file one is going to change, and we're not really going to do this, this is just a, a comment, like like this is. Um, okay, well, in theory you can do something like help s plot, and it'll tell you the 3D plots, projection on a 2D surface, but you knew that in a da 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 Okay, and I'm wondering if that is, nope, we don't want, help contour plot. See, I don't know if they have a contour plot. That is very strange. Okay. Help. Um, okay, so here's the things we can uh, print with it. From here, you should be able to do a completion for uh, contour plot, density plot. Um, it is 2D, but that's not really very exciting. Well, maybe that is what we need. Um... Nice. 
Nice, nice, nice. Uh, help topic. Um, set the view map. All right, give me some help on set view map. Nice. Um, set view map. Okay. Um. Well. Well, I guess we should look at show view first. Wow. So let's do that, and then let's do this. I don't think that's what I wanted, actually, because I think... Whoa, is it? Um, oh, it is, actually, because this is the longitude and this is latitude. Um, okay, groovy, except I think... I think... I think our uh, Z values, well actually let's do a, let's, what the hell is show view, what is the view? The view is map, okay. Um, okay, so we need to make sure we use Z range correctly, whatever the hell that is, nope. Help Z range. Ooh. Okay. Groovy. How do I set the Z range? Minus one to one? Like that. Like this? New. Um, help set X range. Um, okay, set Z range. Minus one to one and then S plot. This is actually a lot easier to use than I thought it would be. Okay. Okay, not groovy. I mean, this is actually good. This shows you where the, the value is between minus one and one. Um, so this is the portion that's in partial eclipse or no eclipse at all, but I'm get gonna bet you anything. Um, the whole planet's in at least some form of eclipse. Yeah. That is really nice. Oh wow. Oh wow. I think I know uh with the new plot you can do stuff like but you can't here. Um Oh wow, that is really groovy. And let me go ahead and set Z range to what we want it to be, which is uh negative infinity to negative one. I don't know if this is gonna let me do this. Yep. And this will show where we're in total eclipse. Uh, assuming it works. Yeah. And which is the, the inverse of that. Not what I wanted, though. I want it to be sort of a rainbow hash that tells me uh, where the greatest eclipse is occurring. Um, and the least eclipse, but that's going to be less of an issue for us. So, very, very nice here. Let's see if there's a help contour. Whoa! Um... Set contour. Um, well, what is the contour set to? Right now it's probably not set to anything. Set contour base. And then, does that actually, okay, I'm gonna guess that doesn't refresh. Cannot contour non-grid data, please use set Dgrid 3D. Okay, well, you say so. Unzoom, unzoom, damn you, unzoom. Okay, come on, there's a way to do this. There's a way to unzoom. That's not cool. Um, I wonder if 
I can just do that again and it'll reset. No. Show view. Set view. I wonder if that, that'll do it. Set view map. Nope, apparently somehow I've managed to really screw this up and make this uh, little tiny view here. And I can make it even tinier. But that's not what we want. We want to make it bigger. I wonder if this will make it bigger. No. Can we do reset view? Uh, help reset. Oh, nice. It resets everything. Okay, cool, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted... Oh, great, right, because this also unsets contour. Um, this, I'm still really fascinated by this. Mm, this is, like, way better than the time I was wasting with Mathix on this shit. Okay. So we should probably start writing down some of these commands. Um, set contour. Or show contour, I guess. Um, help set contour. Oh, yeah, here we are. Set contour base. And then, that's not what I wanted at all. Cannot, oh, Jesus Christ. Set D grid 3D. Ooh. Not exactly what I was looking for, but, but shiny. Um... Uh, yeah, really. So let's see if we can set contour to something else that's really useful. Um, I thought both would give me what I ha show contour. Um, I could have said I, sh I could have sworn I did this. Okay. Not what I expected. Um. Okay, so this is both. I don't think this is what I want, though. Um, I'm going to try the other one solution, which is set contour surface. I think that's the other one. That seems a bit different than... Okay, and this, yeah, it looks like the contours. So this is not what I want. This is really interesting, but it's not what I want. I want a, what's what's called a heat map. Let's see if we can just do help heat map here. No, we cannot. So, help contour. Contour drawing for surfaces, the option is available. It requires grid data. If contours are desired for non-grid data to create an appropriate grid. Set contour, unset contour. The base draws the contours in the grace bid where the surface draws them on the surface and both draws them on both. If you know option, the default is base. Uh, for contours, and set C label for the labeling. Um, oh, wow. You can even do like a set table. And I probably meant to put close quotes on that. Um... I'm beginning to wonder if this is not going to do what I want. Did I not say plot? File one. Okay, so that's not that's not what it what it thinks it is. Um, set counter parameters. Unset table. Plot file name. So let's start all over again here and say plot temp file one. I think that immediately gave us uh, no, no, no. It has to be s plot because um, oh wow, when you type in something incorrectly, it doesn't keep it as part of the history. It's interesting. Okay, hang on. Okay, we did this before and it worked. 
Unless someone deleted temp file when while, while I wasn't watching. To auto scale X's range all points X value undefined. Okay, why did that work earlier? Right okay, maybe it wasn't. Was it not file one? Did I F that up? No, it is. It's temp file one. Oh, shoot. I think I might have overwritten it by doing that set table thing. All right. And I'm going to... The, the newer versions of Gnu Plot kind of suck because their persist doesn't work real well. So I want to test something here real quick. Um, if I do this, Gnu Plot will come up and die almost instantly. If I do this, this is what I expect to happen. Except now you'll notice you can't actually move this around any because Gnu Plot's not running. Uh, there was an older version, or maybe this the newer version, where you can continue to you know manipulate the graph uh, after uh, GNU plot quasi. It doesn't really exit; it just sort of goes into the background. Um, so I wonder if, if that's there might be an option for GNU plot to do that. Um, yeah, and minus p is just persist. There was, there, I think there was a way to make it so that it keeps running, but it just sort of runs the background. And I don't mean the background like this, because that doesn't work. Um, I don't mean the background like this, because that doesn't do what you think it does. Um, there might be a way to just say, like, okay, let's do this real quick here. Playground. And I think you can load it with a file and then keep it going. I mean, it won't it won't stop after it loads the file. So I think you can do GNU plot tilde to bc git mathx uh, playground GNU plot playground really? Hang on, I'm losing my freaking mind. Ground GNU plot. And I wanted that before I um before I screw anything else up. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this file real quick. Uh, if only I could... if only I could think. Uh, good plot. Okay, so I think you can now do... Huh. Um... There's a way to do this. File uh, persist command ex before loading the next input file. Show current version. Um, yeah, this is one of the problems here is that I'm trying to get it to preload stuff uh, without going too crazy on it. Um, and there might be a way to do it in the GNU plot itself. You might be able to say something like dash. That means keep going. No. Um, I n I've got a GNU plot file somewhere, I think. And it might even be called GNU plot something. Let's find out. Um, that actually does have the command in there that says keep going after you load this file. Don't, don't end after you load this file. Uh, there's one. Um, and the rest of these are not really, okay, uh, all right, well, there's a way to do this, and I, yeah, there we go. Um, hmm. Um, wow, none of these are good answers. Well, pause mouse close is probably the closest we're going to get to it. Uh, still not a great answer, though. Um, Uh, 
Okay, let's see if I'm going to try using this pause, close mouse thing here. There's a better way of doing this, though. Uh, and I'm going to see if I can find it. Let me make sure I've got this with pause, mouse, close. Okay, let's see what this does. Well, that's just freaking insane. Line zero util, what the? Oh, right, because we're not in the right... So actually, I should be saying... Let's put that back. I should be saying a new plot until the BC get mathx playground dot new plot. Okay. Nice. So here I can keep going until I guess the mouse closes this. Um, oh, even that doesn't kill it, though. Um... But actually, can I still... I can't type more things in here, though. So that's still not great. There is a way to say continue in, like, the standard input. Um, it's not persist, you morons. Um, lots of things I don't like about GNU Plot. It's not very flexible for me, but that could just be... Uh, um, that could just be me not liking it. Um, okay, so GNU plot, go interactive after loading file. That's what I want. Um, um, God, there's, there's, uh, Wow. Uh, this is just bizarre, but let's try it. I know there's an easier way to do this, and by no I mean I could be very wrong. System TTY. So if this works, this will just be like, it'll load and then it'll let us continue. Let's see what that does. That's not what I want. That's just freaking weird, actually. Alright, stand by while I cheat and look on my main system to see if I have something there. <sighs> and do I? Um, apparently I do not. Uh, I know I've done it, and again, meaning I haven't. Um, all right. So, and persist doesn't work here either, so we don't want that. Um, oh, enter a return, and then... Okay, let's see if that... Whoa! Okay, so the only problem with this is if it, you type something that's not a valid command... It's gonna... it's gonna... yeah. That's not really good. So there is an answer. Um, oh, I think I remember what it is now. Let's get rid of the silliness here. I think if you put standard input as your last file. Yeah, there we go. That's an invalid command, but it doesn't stop anything. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you just have to put, maybe should I answer some of these questions? Um, plot file Does anyone actually suggest minus minus? And should I tell them? 
um, interactive input from the std in. So that's that's how you do it. And it may, may only work with this version of the new plot. So um, screw that. Okay, so we're now going to look for contour plots with, uh, or heat maps, I guess, with GNU plot. Um, I'm going to be bad and actually uh, use the word contour maps because that's harder. Um, contour plots with GNU. Um, okay, this might be what we need. Oh, that is gorgeous. That's what I want. Um, okay, so set PM3D might be the magic here. After all this crap that they're giving us. Um... Okay. All points. Da, 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 da. So apparently we can set this magical thing to um, map. And or we can do this. Um, a PM3D color surface is drawn if splot command specifies with PM3D. Okay. Well, this was really nice. I mean, it works really, really well. And I thought it was less powerful than this. So let's do this. Okay, not ideal because um, it's not working. ISO land scan is not enough for plot. Okay, we will keep that in mind, sir. Uh, do I need to do set grid 3D? 3D grid? or whatever the hell it is. Um, okay, so let me see what um, PM3D is set to. Set PM3D, I think we need to set this to map. And then, it still doesn't work. But now it doesn't work in at least the flat surface. Uh, single ISO land scan is missing blank lines in data file. See help PM3D and the frequently asked questions. Well, let's just do this. This has been really good for us so far. Uh, for drawing palleted 3D and 4D data, is it uses an algorithm uh, non-gridded, even when the data scans don't have the same number of points. Okay, but uh, with PM, if the data or function style is set globally to PM, okay, in the latter two, um, we draw a mesh of lines. If option only plot specify, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, So what are we looking for, though? Okay. So am I not? Am I, maybe I can do PM? I don't think that's even a thing. Um, okay, but we're getting close. We're getting close. Um... Is that what I want? That does not seem correct. Okay. Missing blank lines in data file? No, they're supposed to be like that. I guess PMD3D wants like a blank line in between each other line. I'm not going to give it what it wants though. Oh man. <laughs> Let's see what this does. How to point equipotential lines. Are we in good? Yeah, we are in the new plot. Um, okay, well, set view map. Unset surface, that does not seem like a wise thing to do. Okay.
with line. I didn't make a desk plot with lines. That's kind of cool. Okay. With points? I don't know. That's not very helpful. With. Okay. W1 L. What the hell is this? With lines, line structure. This is not good. Yeah. I mean, it's there, but there's nothing there. Um. This might be too much for even me. Because I'm looking for something very, very simple. And I'm going to go ahead and cheat now. Oh, damn it, these look good. I want to know how you freaking did that. Um, okay. Set something, set table, blah. PM. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so apparently you have to tell it what the contours are and the values are. So that might be where we're running into some problems here. This is more complicated than than it looks. So I'm going to just say now, uh, heat map is what we really want. Heat map with GNU plot. Well, this is much easier. Various ways to create a 2D heat map from ASCII 2 data. Blah, blah. See, 99% of this is crap. Um. And I love the way I say that. 99% of this is crap. I am so freaking smart. All right. That's, um... So, matrix with image. <laughs> Ooh! Okay. I don't think that's what I wanted. Um, that's interesting, though. So we, this is actually uh, a too much of a matrix. We actually want like this, where we have X, Y, and Z data. And um, using two. Wait. Rows must be separated by blank lines. Something's wrong here. Zeros. I mean, why must rows be separated by blank line? That's not cool. All right. Well, let's move the breach, good dear friends. Okay, plot like that. Using to with image. Can we just say with image? See how badly we can mess that up. <gasps> oh, this is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, that is beautiful. Can I make this bigger? Oh, this is nice. I really like this. Oh, it's perfect because it even actually... Um oh, come on. Where's reset previous view? Nope, didn't want to do that. Reset. Okay, so it's really this simple that we get we get to get our heat map. Um, and this heat map tells us that in whatever orientation we have, the maximum eclipse 
curves right in here. Now I'm kind of wondering if we can do a little bit better in terms of the color map we have here. Um, although this is really good. This is really, really good. I really like this. Um, right in this area we're getting that beautiful maximal eclipse here. Um, what the hell? Didn't mean to do that. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, because of course we need to do this. Okay. Alright, so this is kind of how we're going to do this. Um, um, let's see. So this is... Well, actually, we know what this is for. We know what lunar eclipse this is for. We might actually be able to um, um, the line of symmetry is going to be like right there. Of course, it, it, we don't really care that it gets darker like this. So let's let's boogie this baby. All right. Um, And I think we're going to be a little bit more c clever here, because if there's multiple eclipses, we need to figure out a way to just just sort of print one of them. Um, and I think this is actually a good way of doing it. Um, and then we'll look at the file ourselves. And so this is um, the moon is 301, the 10, 300. So these are lunar eclipses. And the reason we have to do this, we can't do solar yet, is because the function that we're using to determine whether an eclipse occurs is incorrect. So let's 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 boogie this baby. All right, and we'll call it temp. Uh, we have very bad file naming conventions. We're going to call it temp file one dot text again. And before I forget, although this is all being videoed, so I guess it's not a huge deal. Uh, the um, the magic command is with image. Um, and again, we could probably we can probably mess with that a little bit. Um, uh, so now we just bring up file one dot text, reload. Um, oh, I guess let's see minus one eighty. Okay, shoot. Yeah, I mean this is probably correct, but I actually forgot to recompile. All right, now. And boy, I probably meant to say this. the hell? Or did I close that one by mistake? All right. Okay. Nine hundredth times the charm. Alrighty. So we have this and good. So um, I'll look for 399. That should only have occurred once. Well, except for like this. Yeah, we get it. Okay, space 399. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. So this is the first one, and this is the one we're going to talk about. I um, guess I probably should have uh, checked to see what that actually was, but but let's let's find it. Let's, okay, let's actually really quickly find that out. Um, that was the one that occurred on January twenty-first. So. What we're going to be plotting now is the January 21st eclipse um, at a given specific time. Um, are we still plotting at the beginning? We are still plotting in, at the beginning, what we consider to be the beginning of the eclipse. All right, let's boogie. Um, all right, let's, let's do it. Okay. I like this better because this has more of sort of an area of non-eclipse. Uh, so now we want to look at the uh, January 21st. Oh, I'm suspicious now. The January 2019 eclipse. Or eclisp. 
as it were. Okay. So it looks like the eclipse is heaviest. Um, unfortunately, our map's not, our, our map just, yeah, maybe it's going to be too inaccurate here for us to really do anything with it. But actually, that kind of, that looks like the opposite of the map we want, which is maybe okay because we, our zero position, um, our zero position is over the equator here, but it's not even over the equator really, it's over, um, it's undefined. Um, okay. So the maximal eclipse occurs here. And I guess the question we want to ask is, how does this point relate to where the sun and the moon are? Or, uh, where, yeah, where the, uh, where the um, I guess we're on the moon, so where the Earth and the sun are um, in terms of spherical coordinates. Um, as 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 viewed from the center of the Earth, uh, so let's let's answer that question. I'm going to go ahead and push this to Git real quick before I forget. Okay. And away it goes. So now let's go ahead and see. We're getting closer. Um. So when we print out all this other crap here uh, about every position, let's see if we could print out. I mean, what's tempting is just to say we're going to print this out from the center position. Um, and that might be doable. So what we want here is. Um, yeah, in fact, that might be sort of the default we, without having to add or subtract anything. So let's, let's see if we can do that. Uh, that would be... Mm, no, we want, a little, we want to do a little bit better than that. We want to say... Um, okay, we want s pause, but we actually want it in a... Um, in spherical coordinates uh, because we want to know sort of where the where that that is happening it might not it might have nothing to do with um, it might have nothing to do with where the eclipse is maximal but the hope is that, that we can get there so let's see this will be um, T spherical and has to be three s spherical three um, and I think that should do it. So we have spherical to rectangular. Uh, no, 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 rectangular to spherical. Yes, it is rectangle to spherical. We're going the other way this time. So rectangular to spherical. Um, and I'm going to double check, but I, I mean it should be very, very similar to what uh, spherical to rectangular. Let's do this. Also, I'm getting sick of all you other uh, tabs. Uh, let's close the rest of them. There we go. Oops, I may, might have not meant to close the other, that one. Um, and we'll get we'll get back to it soon. Um, so we send in this and we come back with okay. It's going to give us back three variables instead of an array of three. Gotta love this stuff, right? So um, yeah, I'm not quite feeling up to sending in. Um, an array of three variables one at a time. So R colat lawn. TR, which we already have defined. So T pause R. T pause colat. T pause long. Uh, and then, of course, S pause R. S pause colat. S pause long. Okay, so this will get back the. Um, rectangular and spherical coordinates, well, from the rectangular coordinates which we have, uh, bring back the uh, spherical coordinates. So that's S pause, S pause R, S Esposito, S signed Esposito's mother. If you know that reference, 
You are freaking old. All right. And then we'll do this for the same for T position. Um. And it is important to misspell position as pog. Okay, and do we I'm trying to see if there's if we care that um, about and well, you know what, let's just print this out for right now and then see what goes on. Um, and I oh here we go this should be fun. I want to print the longitude first, but I also want <laughs> uh, degrees per radian, right? DPR. Yeah. Wait. Oh, we're not. Wait, wait, wait. Am I in the wrong function? Um. All right. This converts degrees to radians. We want to go the other way. Yeah. Uh, DPRC, so this will convert the longitude uh, to degrees, then the latitude, but there's a problem here uh, that in that um, NASA is stupid. And this is actually going to be 90 minus this number here. And then S pause R. Okay. So T physician spherical will be the T pause longitude, the 70 minus the t pause lat latitude, and then finally the t. The radius is probably not going to be super important to us. Uh, I'm not seeing that as a huge, um, a huge deal. Um, so I'm almost tempted to maybe put these out to different places because obviously um, the first two lines are going to have nothing to do with the other printing of the t and latitude and longitude. However, I think I can survive, you know, manually tweaking these files. Especially since we are just, everyone together, testing. That's right, there's too bad there's not a category called just testing. Because I would use it. And hello, if you're a real person, to all my users. I know two of them are not. Apparently Lurks just keeps uh, statistics on on Twitch. So maybe that's like a API thing that connects. I don't know if it's within uh, their policy, uh, within Twitch's policy. Oh, oh, oh! Int yeah, because print is not really a function. It's called printf. And in this case, I think it will be forcing it to remake. Yeah, because if it fails to make, it doesn't, we don't get the update. So uh, let's see what this is. Okay, interesting. Those two numbers are the sa very similar, and I'm okay with that. And then, back over here, where's our freaking... It. Okay. So we know the sun. Now apparently we don't know the sun. Okay. We know the sun is coming from minus 57 longitude, which is right around this area, and minus 20 latitude. Yeah, that's not really a, a super great position to know what's going on here. Um, okay. And the other thing is also coming very close to that point. So that's not helpful at all. Um, yeah. So if we were to travel in the direction of from the center to the direction of T or S, we would be going here, which really does not seem that useful, to be honest. Okay. Now, we can improve things a little bit here um, by only plotting the half of the world where the sun is actually up. And... Um, I mean, from here, this would be, um, it'd be actually kind of strange, but we, we will be able to work that out because we know um, that where the sun is up, let's see, um, 
Yeah, the sun is going to be up if the vector, the dot, the cosine of the angle between, uh, no, the angle between the vector to the surface and the vector to the sun is less than 90 degrees in either direction. Going back to our diagram, which I have now erased very nicely. Um, let's see if I can get back to... Um, think this is actually what I wanted. Or yeah. Why oh why? Anyway, that's gonna be within ninety degrees of the sun. Um if the angle is more than 90 degrees, uh, you are on the dark side of the sun. So let's see if we can um, we can handle that. Okay. So Q temp is the vector pointing from the surf uh, from the center to the surface, and I hope I don't get this backwards. Um, is it vec ang? I should probably, once I get this working, um, uh, pin this and unpin that. What, 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 what? No, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, wait, hang on. That's giving us what we want. I don't know what's complaining, but it is giving us what we want. So, what we're going to ask here is whether the angle from here to the surface is going to be on this side. In other words, if the angle between this and the angle to the sun is less than 90 degrees, we're on the solar side. Um, whatever the hell that means. Okay. Um, t -t 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 -t. Oh, and we're looking for the function called vector angle, which I think is just vec ang or something. Ang vec, come on. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, is it vector separation? Is that what I want? Vec sep? Sep vec? Okay, we're just going to look for vec. Matrix transpose. Normal vec. Okay, that those are actually good functions. We don't need them right now, though. Um. Oh! That could be really useful later, transform a vector by a rotation. Not th now, though. Two vectors defining an orthonormal frame. Uh, the unit vector, unit vector norm, add vectors, uh, cross vectors, vector distance, vector dot product. We're very close to vector dot product here. Equality v hat vector linear combination pack three scalar components into a vector vector projection projection into a plane yeah sometimes you get the feeling they're just going to go through every single vector function here angular separation of vectors see they just don't quite do it the way you want um and fortunately, this is actually very nicely an actual, um, an act it returns an actual double value. It doesn't, requ it doesn't require you to pass in parameters. So if VSEP, well, we probably can print this. C of Q temp, um, I think we're need an absolute value here. Um, Q temp comma S pause. Okay, hang on. Um, if it's greater than 90, we want to continue. If the absolute value is greater than 90. And because we're not converting, this is actually going to be greater than... Uh, pi over 2. And in 
curl in Momosho, that's that function there is um, is next, not continue. Okay, now we're going to try to compile once again. And wow. Um. Are we? Is it still printing everything? I guess the way to find out is to do a word count. And um, with the exception of that one extra row. Um, oh no, actually it's not. Hang on. Uh, okay, I thought it wasn't. Okay. So in terms of the minus 180 to 180, we're printing 372 there. And from minus 90 to 90, uh, we are printing um, in, in chunks of 5, 18 times 5, which is 90. No, it's not. Um, 36, I think, so that's even... need to fix that. 2,592, that's not right. So hang on, 365 over 5, 72. 180 over 5... 36. So apparently we might have gotten like two of them in here or something uh, mixed up. Let's let's take a look. I think we actually did realize that earlier. And um, uh, because we actually have like a 399 in here and then it does again something more. And so I think we can change this to be like 2019 point even two because January very, comes in very quickly. And then there it is. Okay. So this has 2031 rows, where we worked out that, okay, so actually it does not have every point on the sphere in it. That is fantastic news. And I've gotten bored of file one. I'm going to call this file two. All right, so let's go ahead and go into file two here. We do need to get rid of this, this, and the last line. And just to make sure there's no 399, there's not. Okay, so now, meanwhile, black the new plot. Yeah, I probably should shut down the Mathic server. Um, ooh! Number of pixels cannot be factored into integers matching grid, so it doesn't like that. Uh, that's not good. That's that's not good at all. Um, I mean it makes sense actually, but because it does want like a structured grid to do this with. Um, I'm wondering if I could put NA in there instead. I'm I'm going to regret that, but I regret everything. Unlike the guy who regrets nothing. Uh, why don't we, if this happens? Um, I get the feeling this is not going to work. Um, we're going to see if if we can get we can convince new plot that uh, good new plot uh, that these values are not uh, available. So it still has the grid that it wants, but at the same time, it doesn't um, it doesn't actually try to print anything there. And this is kind of where you can see that when you start doing this in production, you really don't want to have to keep doing this every time. Um, but again, we're, we're still in testing mode. We'll remain in testing mode for freaking as long as I want to. Whoa! That is like the coolest thing ever. Um... So I don't know why it's coming out like in yellow and black, but but that looks like that's the night side of the of the planet. Um, so none of this is particularly helping us. Um, hmm. So we know this is a continuous function on two dimensions. A
I guess we could me uh, measure the partial derivatives at any given point. Um, we're trying to find, you know, I mean, the partial derivatives, we can get the gradient at any point, I guess. Um, and this is just freaking funky, man. Um, So what's weird sort of here is that it earlier had the same warning with the other file. Um, let's see what it does with this file. Uh, this one has any in it or not? This one that does not have any in it. This does have any in it. If you'd like to put an ME in it. Um, okay. So, I mean, what's weird is I, I could have sworn that uh, it didn't even bother to draw the damn thing last time. It, it instead of just giving us a warning, it just basically said we're not going to do this. So um, that's kind of an interesting thing to look at there. Okay, da 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 da. -da. Um. Okay, so this time it doesn't even print anything at all. Um, instead of printing with an NA. So the only thing I can think of is we can set the NAs to be minus two or something, um, which is just a terrible way of doing things. But that will force them to be all black, which, which is correct. I mean, it's the night side of the planet. I mean, it, they are black. Um, but I'm still not happy with it. Okay, let's see what this does. Okay. 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 Oh wait, did I kill my Kadu plot? I might have. Okay, gorgeous. So that little apular region there is um you see, it doesn't really look correct, but, um, so in January, this actually might be correct, because we're, we're actually using a, um, an equiangular map, it looks kind of terrible. Um, but yeah, the winter is going to be longer here in the northern hemisphere in January, shorter here in the, um, in the southern hemisphere. Um... So I guess the question is, at any given point, um, we could find the gradient. That's not a hard thing to find. Um, and does that tell us? Does that lead us to the point of the greatest and least eclipse? Uh, it, with the exception of the night thing, which we, we probably need to get rid of somehow. Um, hmm. And of course, the other question is, can we rotate this whole thing so our boundaries are minus 20? And so we, we basically, the night side is uh, precisely uh, from, you know, um, negative, but plus 90 to minus 90 in, in longitude, or minus, uh, the, uh, plus 90 wrap around to minus 90 in longitude. Because uh, if we can do that, then we have, we've actually made the problem a lot simpler. Um, and I guess I don't see why we couldn't do that. Uh, right now we're just using J2. Th we, uh, the coordinate system is arbitrary because all we care about is is angles, which will not the you know as long as the the um, angles the um, the transformation is uh, it's either a pure rotation or it could even be a rotation with scaling. As long as it doesn't skew the basis vectors, we should be fine. Um, so does this give us really any sort of insight into what we're looking for? And I am thinking that it does not give us any insight uh, into that. Um, and are we looking at, are these points antipodal? So plus 40, oh they are antipodal. So it looks like the point of the greatest eclipse and the point of the least eclipse, at least in this case, are antipodal, or close to antipodal. Um, 
Now, of course, the problem with treating this as a uh, as a gradient is uh, this is a um, this isn't an equi this is not a, a real map. This is a sort of a, a flattening map of of reality. Um, but that might be okay. So, so between that and the fact that we have this very jagged sort of cutoff um, in the boundary condition that is not a smooth boundary condition. Um, yeah, let's see what I want to do here. Well, you know, let's go crazy with this. Let's see if we can actually, because um, we're, we're now doing this with data, let's see if we can actually go back to making it every one degree of latitude and longitude since we don't actually have to look at it anymore, which is always a good reason to do things. And of course we can make it a, um, we can make it a, that was freaking quick. I mean, so quick that I kind of want to make it even bigger to see what happens, but I won't. Okay. Um, okay, now we're getting some more smoothness here, which I'm not actually crazy about. Um, Yeah, I kind of want contour lines, though. I, d I really don't want this um, sort of fuzzy map. I want sort of a um, uh, a straighted map. And I, you know, I bet I, I could do that actually if I were to um, round the values, uh, the final values in in chunks instead of um, instead of having them very smoothly. So let me see if I can do that. Now I could do that in C, of course. That, there's no question about that. Um, but I'm wondering if I can do that in uh, in Perl. I mean, I'm not wondering. I can do that in Perl, obviously. Let's just do it, and let's just make sure this is fine. Okay, but, 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 oh, whoa, whoa. Okay, that's why I didn't want to do that. Um, so we don't want to change dollar sign O, dollar sign F, dollar sign F2. Again, this is just to make sure that it it we're we know what the hell we're doing. Okay, good. So now we're going to say. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take F2, multiply it by 100. We'll do 100 for now. That might be actually too much. Take the round of that and divide by 100. And then sort of printing. Well, you know what? I think we can actually... I wonder if it'll let us change F2. It shouldn't, but it might. And to use round, we need to use POSIX. Seriously? Seriously? Is it math round? It's not math round. Uh, let me see if floor works, and if it does, we'll need to add 0.5 to make it into a round. Yep. Um, times 100 over floor of this number, plus 0 0.5. There we go. Okay. Well, I dubbed the file 3. I am so creative with my names. Let's see if that does what we want in terms of give it that might still give us too many contours actually. So we might have to tweak that, but let's see what that does. Yeah, that still g is giving us too many contours there. Uh, let's bump it down to the tenth. So we'll multiply it by ten, divide by ten, and ta da! Can I get a ta da from the audience? Okay, I heard you. I heard you. Um, so this is looking really good here. Um, and the real sort of bugaboo here is um, the night side of the planet. And um, I mean, what's interesting here is we really could rotate things so um, the ve vector to the sun is is the x ve is the x vector or whatever it could be the y vector or z vector doesn't really matter but as long as it's one of the one of the straight vectors um, and then this would become a, a simpler pr it still wouldn't be trivial by the way because we still have boundary conditions um, but it'd be really nice in the sense that the um, the point where the sun is overhead would be like right here in the freaking middle. So I'm, let's see if we can. I'm gonna go ahead and push this to 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 get real quick. Um, 
Uh, let's see. Okay, so it's going back over here. So when we choose our longitude and latitude vectors, um, right now we're just choosing to be sort of, uh, you know, based on whatever, uh, you know, based on um, sort of the default latitude and longitude. Um, whichever coordinate system we're given, which happens to be J2000. So the question is now, can we arrange these so that 0, 0 is the, um, is the vector that points towards the sun, and then everything else is sort of determined from there, east, west, north, or south of that. And, um, and obviously we can do that. Um, position from Q to S and Q to, I should probably add N to T, Q to T. And see, everything else now will depend on s pause and t pause. So, really, really would be nice if we could rotate s pause to be the x vector. Um, oddly enough, the problem isn't that we don't know how to do that, but there's too many ways of doing that. Um, so, the other thing we could do is we could try to ro rotate it so that the t pause. Um, we can't make that on the x vector, obviously. We can make it though so its z position is zero. Or, or something like that. So we have our planar image again uh, that we like so much uh, and that we thought would be really helpful in finding out the answer. So let's see what we can do here. Um, okay, and I think we found a function that might have been useful for all this which we were uh, looking at earlier that I said, hey, this is a cool looking function. Um, Separation, rotation, I think it was. Um, vector rotation about an axis. Okay. Um, and that sounds like what we need to do, actually. And we know what the, d we know what the value is because we actually convert from S and T's spherical coordinates. Um, no, they're v we, actually, we actually don't even need their... Right, we could create from their... Um, rectangular coordinates with their spherical coordinates. So this might be the bomb, folks. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. What is R? Oh. Oh, right, right, so three element array, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so we now know what the um, so we have these vectors here. Now we've got to be careful here um, because if we don't, tr we need to transform both vectors equally and all vectors we're dealing with must be transformed equally. Otherwise we will screw this up. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, so what's interesting here is I don't know if we need to use J2000 as our um, no, we don't. We, any frame here would work. Is there sort of a more natural frame than J2000? I mean, um, the Q body frame could be really, really nice because that'll tell us um, what the latitude and longitude is in the Q body. Um, so IAU Earth, for example, would be a really good, good, good thing to have here. Um, because then it would tell us the positions on the Earth. Um, and I'm tempted enough to do that that I want to kind of just put in IAU Earth here. My only concern is that um, it's not really the frame I want. It's because that's not going to be the fixed frame. It's going to be something, like, bad. It's going to be the wrong frame. Okay, that, that part of it ran okay. Hmm. Well, I'm very suspicious now. Okay, let's do it again. 
Wait. Oh, do I still have... Oh, I still have minus twos floating around. Okay, so according to this, at the time, the beg time, which was uh, the thing I deleted, in one sec, there it is. Um, at this time, presumably, the sunrise sunset field looked like this, and we, we actually will be able to tell pretty easily. So 4.32 in the morning GMT, um, that actually doesn't look bad, because the sun would just be rising, um, and the maximum eclipse would be in the southern hemisphere. So now, oh good, we got rid of that page too. Lunar eclipse, now by the way, lunar eclipse of December 2019 just occurred, solar eclipse of, uh, of uh, December 2019 I think occurred earlier today. It actually might be occurring right now. So if you're, uh, let's see, it is. Oh wow! No, the new moon is actually still a few hours away. So if you're in the sun, if you're in some place where you can see the frickin' um, lunar eclipse, um, uh, in no, I'm sorry, solar eclipse, solar eclipse, um, go frickin' watch it. Don't be watching this. Uh, so, let me actually find that real quick, because it's not here, I know, because it's dark here. Uh, uh, let's bring the fire map of solar and your little clips. Um, Oh, and I think this means it's happening right now. So, go frickin' watch that annular solar eclipse. Now, for the rest of us who can't watch it, I'll get back to this less interesting lunar eclipse. Um, okay, so we have this. All the eclipse visible. And the weird thing here is my I show sort of an up bump and they show sort of a down bump. So according to them, well, shoot. All right, let's see. I'm trying to compare these maps and I'm not sure they're exactly comparable. And they might not be because this is actually, I think, at the middle of the eclipse and we're looking at the, the beginning of the eclipse. Um, I believe it though. So now, so is that interesting enough to care? Probably not. So there's a partial eclipse here. Well, okay, so does this say the whole world is, um, yeah, I just realized, of course, we're also, uh, looking not necessarily we're looking at the moon. Yeah, this is actually the moon we're looking at. We're asking the degree of obscurity on the moon. So at the beginning of the eclipse, what this is saying is uh, this portion of the moon and this portion of the moon are not um, are not lit. And this is the dark side of the moon. Um, so so it turns out that information is not very useful at all. That doesn't show you where on Earth the eclipse occurs. It shows you where on the moon the, Earth, the eclipse is occurring. We're going to go back to J2000 for this. And... I think what we need to do is look at it. Mid eclipse, every place should be within within darkness. Um, so let's take a look at that real quick. So yeah, now we should have the whole moon eclipsed. Okay. Oh come on. All right. Yep, sorry, because the thing that's being eclipsed is the moon. The visibility from Earth is, because it's a lunar eclipse, the whole moon goes dark. It, it is, if you can see the moon, you can see the eclipse. So that was uh, kind of a stupid thing for me to do there. Um, yeah, you'll notice the highest possible value is minus one, meaning the entire frickin' moon is eclipsed. Um, Uh, 
And I guess that purple area, oh, because I said that to be minus 2, in this case it would be minus 2.4 or something. That's where the um, the sun has, it's in the dark zone anyway. Okay. So that is interesting. And of course from here we could return the min and max, uh, the min and max eclipse at this point in time. Um, and again, that would just mean the point on the moon where the uh, where the least eclipse is is the the part where most of the sun is still visible. And the, the greatest eclipse, once it's past minus one, it doesn't matter because it's a total eclipse. Okay. Um, so the several questions remain. One is how do we determine if any sort of eclipse is occurring? And I guess that would be by looking at the uh, the minimal value, see if it's still greater than zero, in which case no eclipse. And then um, at the maximum value and, and sort of see if that's greater than minus one, there is a, uh, uh, less than minus one, there is a total eclipse somewhere. So the next, the next thing here we need to do is be able to find out, um, and this is a continuous function, so that's not the problem. Um, so I guess we could take the gradient and the edge conditions would have to be somehow dealt with uh, just by looking at I guess the maximum and minimum values on the edge as a linear function and that probably could be done with uh, with a fairly simple algorithm that shouldn't be too hard to do there. The harder part here will be um, once be an antipodal, that's interesting and both of them are still on the light side. Um, see, and to me that says something. I don't know what it says, but it says something. Um, so I guess the portion of the least eclipse would be, uh, the portion of the greatest eclipse would be pretty much where, um, I guess where they line up, right? I mean, it's going to be, um, if 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 the line actually hits the center to center line actually hits um, the sphere the surface of the sphere that is going to be uh, that's going to be the point of the maximum eclipse I think um, because that's where basically yeah that that will be the one problem is if it doesn't hit we will still have a maximum eclipse somewhere. Um, because it's the umbral cone can still hit even if the max if the center to center point doesn't. Um, but then I'm wondering if we could just say that's the closest point uh, on the surface to where the uh, you know to the line that connects this you know the, the connects the two points. So I'm wondering if that's the way to do it. We look at the line connecting uh, uh, you know the planet and the sun, the sun and the planet, and see where it gets closest to Q. And uh, basically, that would be the vector of maximization. And I think that actually sounds correct. That, that does sound like where you would expect the maximum to be would be uh, the closest point to where the two things, the, the sun and the planet, are lined up. Um, and the reason I don't fully believe that still is because of the angular separation difference. Um, the angular separation could change quite a bit. Um, and if that's the case, then you don't necessarily have that, uh, because as you get further away, the not the angular separation rather, but the angular um, the angular diameters, the angular radii, because as you get further away, they get smaller. So it's quite possible that the size increase of the angular diameters uh, along the surface of the sphere exceeds the the diminishment of the. Um, the diminishing value of this, the the angular separation, and I think that was the the big issue that we were having earlier, is um, to figure out maybe we could figure that out from derivatives. Like the angular separation um, changes a certain amount, and it's also possible that we could actually consider that our first target point, and and look at gradients from there. It might not be a local maximum. Um, and I think we'll probably see functions to deal with this, um, provided certain conditions are met. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. And so the next step here might just be to rotate this. So we're looking at vectors um, where both T and S are in the XY plane and S is straight in the X direction. Um, and that's really shouldn't be too hard to do because we kind of, we need more frickin' variables, but that's not going to kill us. Um, uh, and uh, we can't, we need, I wonder, we can't assign arrays to each other that simply, so let's take a look here. So this is the position in J2000, which is an arbitrary frame we chose for convenience. Um, and uh, okay. So I don't know if we can actually just create an arbitrary frame that makes um, that makes S and T the X and Y vectors. That we could actually. Um, in fact, let's see if we can do that. It, I don't think it's simple, though, unfortunately. I think it's it requires a little bit of extra work here. So let's see. Um, frame. Built-in frame IDs. We don't want any of those. Class and class ID with associated frame. Centers. Hang on, that might be interesting. I don't think that's what we need, though. Retrieve frame ID or to associate with the frame center. Um, no, so we, that's just if we have a preferred reference frame, which we do not. Center name to associate with, nope. Well, this sounds promising. Um, given a vector x, this routine builds a right-handed orthonormal frame xyz where output x is parallel to the input x. What about y and z, though? Um, hmm. x is a new unit vector parallel to the original input vector. There are no special, other than they complete the right-hand trick. So this is almost, um, uh, if x is on, well, yeah, then, okay. This is very close um, to what we need here, actually. Except we want to do it with two vectors. Um, okay, but the two vectors we want are not... Uh, no, no, that's not going to work. Because the two vectors we want are not going to be um, perpendicular. The, the vector to S and vector to T will be very similar. Uh, the only thing we're asking is that we do two, two rotations to bring them both into uh, the XY plane. So that might not be the way to do this. Kernel pool frame, name to frame, pick reference, and native frame. Ooh. Two vectors defining an orthonormal frame. Um, but I'm guessing the two frames have to be equivalent. Uh, to be, have to be, ortho have to be normal to each other. A given vector and a second vector Lying in the specified coordinate plane. Booyah. A vector defining a principal axis. Principal axis number of AX def. Oh, right, right. So we want, what is it we want? Which axis do we want it to? And the vector defining the principal plane and what that principal plane actually is. And it gives us back a rotation. Make. What? No, I want a frame, damn it. Um, I'll find the transformation to the right-handed frame having... Okay, but it doesn't actually create a frame for me, does it? Dumbass. Um, Built-in class. I think we just looped. Um, still not... This is not bad, though. Find the transformation to the right-handed frame having the vector... Da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 and the return value is going to be a 3x3 three three matrix. Yep, it is. Um, the second. Uh, 
Okay. So this will give us the matrix that does what we want. We can then multiply that by um, by both. Um, we can multiply both s and t by it. This is probably equivalent to rotating s to be the x-axis and then rotating uh, t to be in the xy-axis. So we rotate its new z coordinate. This is probably faster than that, though. Um, so let's make a note of that. Um, Uh, where S and T are in... well, they're always going to be in the same plane, they're, it's a triangle, but... Um, and T is in XY plane, or something of that nature. It, we might end up saying like Z or something, but I mean, the, the point is we're going to make this so that our, uh, our... the most important thing for us is that our... Um, our nighttime area is is a solid line now in the longitude latitude space. It is not a um, it is not this sort of funky looking oval thing. So for us to have to do, you know what that means? It means that I have been streaming for one hour and thirty six minutes. Jesus Christ! Um, again, some of you believe this is a birthday. I don't believe he exists. So, kumsi kumsa. Anyway, thank you for watching the stream and good night, or for right now, goodbye.